take a look at your life and say, is the time that I'm using reflecting the priorities that I have right now? You're offering up these little tiny sacrifices so that you can train your will to be able to say yes to the greater things in life. Reading books, spending family time together, family games, like there's so much stuff that you can fill your life that would be rich and beautiful and amazing this Lent. Like to just think, what, what would our Lent be like after this time if we weren't all staring at our screens? Hey everyone, welcome to The Catholic Link Show. We're your hosts, Drew and Katie Taylor, and we pray this time will be your link to living the faith like never before. Lent is coming up, so this episode we're going to be talking about what you should give up for Lent. Or maybe what you can give up to, for Lent, because I think the should, each one of us is called to something different, and the Holy Spirit lives within you, and we just pray that this video helps you to listen to that nudge of where the Lord is calling you specifically this year, which might be different yeah. than where he's calling us. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point of the first part about this is to pray, pray and ask God, God, what are you calling me to give up? Where are you calling me to grow this Lent? Um, because that will be the, the most important place to go for ideas. And when we are going through this list, maybe it's the place that you have the most resistance. Why do you think that that would be impossible for you, for your family, for your circumstances? Now, there are some legit reasons. <laughs> yeah. Having been nursing and pregnant for the last eight years, uh, there are some things like fasting, hardcore, all day, every day of Lent, and only eating after the sunset, probably not healthy. Like that is probably yeah, not yeah, something no. that I'm ever called to. Um, no, I would argue. It's moderation even. I am not called to. Yeah. Um, but there are things that I'm resistant to because of an addiction, because of how I idolize or prioritize those in my life. Um, and I'm not willing to see the Lord's invitation in those. And that's another important place to start, right? Is the why. Why do we give mm -hmm. up stuff for Lent? And a lot of that has to deal with we are addicted to things. We prioritize lower things than God in our life. And we start to make them our gods, right? How much time do you spend on your phone versus mm -hmm. praying? That stings a little bit <laughs> because we're all addicted to these things. So... How do we make it so that we are prioritizing God? And part of that is to give up these things that some of them may be good. Some, if some of them may be bad, we give up the bad stuff, but we're giving up these lower pleasures so that we can refocus our relationship on God and prioritize him and say, God, you are the most important thing in my life right now. And I'm going to work on that. And I think it's easy. So as parents, married, young kids, our mission right now is hard, mm -hmm. but the reality is, is that when we go through these fastings, so Jesus went into the desert to prepare for those 40 days. He went in and he fasted on specific things to allow him to answer the God's call for his public ministry, ultimately of his crucifixion and his suffering and death for us. And so we are called in to uniting through that process, allowing ourselves to die a little bit more to allow him to live a little bit more through us and actually make our mission easier. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get into the list. The first one, first kind of category we're going to talk mm -hmm. about is things to give up. And we're going to talk about this first one that everyone knows <laughs> is chocolate. Okay. So I had a really tough time because there was a campaign a couple of years ago that said like, don't give up chocolate. And I started to feel guilty that that was an area that the Lord was actually calling us to previously. Um, and it, where was where I needed to bear fruit. I needed to say no to my pantry. I needed to stop immediately grabbing something that made me feel better mm -hmm. for an instant gratification that actually wasn't good for my body or mm -hmm. my entire system. Um, and as something that is easy with kids, I loved giving up sweets last Lent with my kids. Yeah, it's actually really nice. It's really nice to have an excuse. And they're like, can I have this? And you're like, no. We do allow them to have uh, sweets on Sundays. There's mm -hmm. obviously debate on whether you break the fast on Sundays. Our church has donuts after mass. It's a critical part of our week in order to allow us to socialize. So uh, that is something that they do have. But it was very nice to teach them a small spiritual discipline. 
and have an excuse for less sugar in our <laughs> lives. <laughs> yeah. But also like on the other side of that coin, if you're single or maybe yes. married, no kids, and you don't really have a problem with sweets, <laughs> then like just giving up chocolate for Lent is probably not, isn't not where the gonna do any good for you. you. So the next one we're going to bring up mm -hmm. is a little trickier, I think, in today's day and age. So we're just going to talk about media in general yes. and break this down into different categories and different ideas. <laughs> First would be TV. Uh, we have had friends put like a purple sheet over their television. Mm -hmm. uh, they have hid their remotes just to create a barrier to entry, um, but also to kind of out of sight, out of mind, this big, huge black thing that mm -hmm. entices us all the time. Yeah. And I, I know you might be listening to this thinking like, there's no way I could have my family give up media. And I just want to encourage you that um, yeah, it can be hard at first, but there is so much fruit that we have seen in our lives mm -hmm. from um, not having our kids be addicted to media and reading books, spending family time together, family games. Like there's so much stuff that you can fill your life that would be rich and beautiful and amazing this Lent. Mm -hmm. Like to just think what, what would our Lent be like after this time if we weren't all staring at our screens? Yeah. And so maybe it's taking away tablets. Um, if that's something that your family has, maybe it is trying these radical ideas of living mm -hmm. screen free. Uh, maybe it is a bend for your phone and you have very specific times that you are allowed to check it. Um, but it is not something that you are constantly accidentally picking up even to look at the time or did somebody message me or flip through an app immediately before you even think about it I uh, and so maybe there is some barrier that needs to be put there maybe mm -hmm. it is giving up social media and that involves I've had friends that have had to have other people have their passwords and mm -hmm. change them like as well as delete their accounts as well as you know off of their phones yeah, yeah so they, like the barrier the of entry yeah of I've now been signed out locked out <laughs> Yes. <laughs> am I really going to go through and send myself an email and reset my password? Like, am I going to make these four decisions? Um, because I've decided to give it up. And again, this is, if we go back to the why, why are we giving this stuff up? It's because God doesn't want us to be happy. No, <laughs> it's because we've become addicted to these things. Again, how much time do you spend doom scrolling Instagram versus reading a good faith book that helps you grow as a person? So I think that's important. Um, for yourself, but I think it's also important to relay that to your kids. This is a teaching moment of why can't we play video games for eight hours today? Well, because it's Lent and because gonna we are going to focus on games. Lord. Now, I will say that if you are taking something away, I think it's also appropriate to try to give something in replacement, especially for your children. So it's not just this like um, dictatorship of zero fun. It's no, we're, we're not going to do that during Lent because we're going to focus on this. And there's so many amazing Christian Catholic resources out there um, that are awesome and fun and that you can spend time with your kids doing. Yeah, and maybe that's the step that you're ready for this year is giving up secular mm, yes. movies, yeah. giving up secular TV, and you're going to actually go on to Formed or watch The Chosen. or And so there is some soul benefit yeah. to what we're watching as well uh, that might be where your family is called this year. I think it's also important for us to just touch on that all Catholics are called to give up meat on Fridays. Again, this is a great teaching moment. If you give up meat on Fridays, now that is allowing the blood of Christ to be the only blood that's spilled on Fridays. So we're just reorienting our lives and putting Christ and God as number one in our life. So I also think that there's two things to this, right? <laughs> Giving up steak in order to go have a lobster dinner is like probably not the intent of this. <laughs> the idea is that we are sacrificing, we're giving up to live simply um, in order to, again, just, just focus on the Lord. And then the other one I, I like about uh, not eating meat on Fridays is it can be an evangelization tool. So when you're in the break room, um, at work and you don't have meat on Friday, people might ask about it or the conversation kind of comes up that it's Lent. And then that's just an easy way to say like, yeah, we don't, you know, I'm Catholic, so I don't eat meat on Fridays. And people be like, why is that? And then you could return to this video and remind them like, hey, that's kind of a cool thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think in that too, the call to simplicity. Mm -hmm. 
And that can look like removing your condiments, removing salt and pepper, removing things that make eating more enjoyable yeah, and just con- pleasurable. Just the little conveniences yes. in your life. And so that might be giving up the microwave. Hey, it'd probably be better for our health. That's but right. it would also just take longer. There's some intentionality that has to take place in order to avoid the meltdown screaming debacle mm. that can occur while making dinner. Um, and so the and offering that, like offering the reality that, hey guys, I know that this is taking five minutes longer than you would like. However, we have offered this as a family to sacrifice for the Lord. And now I need your guys' help in the reality that the pots and pans need to be cleaned, Mm -hmm. the reality that we have to wait. And so what are we going to do as a family? Can you help me set the table? Can you help unload the dishwasher? Can you use this time in a way to serve each other and just teaching our kids, again, that those little sacrifices, that they matter um, in not constantly saying yes to every pleasure and every desire of my heart. So the Mm -hmm. idea that the more little no's that I give myself, the easier it is to say no to the big temptations. Right. Because, because we're training our wills, right? Our wills are like muscles. If we don't work out, they become weak and we, and then when we need them, we're, we're not able to make the hard choices. So part of discipline, part of the spiritual life is to say no to little conveniences and to train ourselves. Maybe that's saying no to, uh, sleeping in after your alarm. Uh, maybe that's saying no, maybe that's saying no to warm showers, uh, which if you haven't done before, I suggest doing that for Lent. Um, because again, you're just, you're offering up these little tiny sacrifices so that you can train your will to be able to say yes to the greater things in life. Absolutely. I, another one is sleep. And giving up sleep? Not giving up <laughs> sleep, but giving up the things that are keeping you from sleep. Yeah. Number one, it's an act of pride to say that all of these things depend so much upon me that I have to get them done before I can rest. Mm-hmm. And so allowing yourself to reclaim your identity yeah. as a daughter and son of God and to rest that he gives his beloved sleep. And I think that that just turn and then okay, if it's not that you're so busy that you have all these things to get done, but like you're like, I need some me time to like zone out on Netflix and my Instagram. Maybe again, we're addicted to these things and what would really help us to have a better, smoother day with work, with our spouse, with our kids, with our responsibilities would be to just go to sleep. And so giving yourself a bedtime and being strict with that. The last thing that I really recommend giving up for Lent is bad attitudes. So not only do I like this for myself, it's also really nice for the family to be able to say like, hey, we agreed upon, we're giving up bad attitudes for Lent. Now there's going to be hard times and especially with the kids and stuff. It's really important for us to realize that before we add sacrifices, that we're doing the sacrifices, the penance that are naturally being given to us from the Lord with joy. Mm -hmm. And if we can't do those with joy, then we should be adding a cold shower in. We should be really really focused on praising the Lord through these hard moments and allowing our hearts to be transformed, to be cheerful givers of our lives in the, my kid is throwing up and therefore X that I was planning on is not going to get done. So now how do I joyfully love and serve the one that is in front of me? Yeah. Give up complaining. Give Give up up, complaining. Give up nagging. And give up Um, gossip. Oh, yeah. I think those are all, yeah. I think that praying and just taking a survey of where you're at and it's like, man, is there something that I could do that Mm -hmm. I'm, is, is there a duty that I have to do in my life that I'm not doing joyfully? Then that might be your answer for Lent. Yes. And so with this, it's not only in Lent, there is a beauty in making space for the Lord. But once we've made that space, we actually have to fill it with the Lord. And so it's not just, I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give it up. There is some adding in of spiritual practices that we just want to touch on. And so the first is prayer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whether that is the capacity of a full holy hour every day, or just if you're right now not praying at all, getting to five minutes, getting to 10 minutes. Yes. Having set scheduled prayer time. And so things that are not scheduled do not happen. And so looking at the 40 days of Lent and going, where can I add in? Maybe it's a daily mass, Mm -hmm. one daily mass a week, more than you're doing right now. 
Maybe it is time and adoration weekly for you and your spouse and how you're going to trade that off and what that's going to look like. Again, if it's not scheduled, never going to happen. Confession. Yeah. Where am I going to go to confession more this Lent and really turn my heart to the Lord to break these bonds that have happened, these sins, these addictions that have taken root into my life? Uh, maybe it is what are you praying with specifically during Lent that is helping you dive into the season. It can be as easy as the book of Isaiah. Yeah. You know, it can be the Gospel of John. It might be a Lenten devotional that is specific, uh, that is written in a way that can help you dive into the scriptures and dive in to where the Lord is calling you today. On top of personal prayer, one thing that I really, really recommend focusing on for Lent is prayer as a couple. So, and this can be really easy. We've got videos that we can link here of how to pray with your spouse, but it can be an, as easy as just getting together at night and saying, how can I pray for you? Um, and man, it's just so powerful to be able to be on the same team um, and to share some of the struggles, the hardships, and the joys in your life and just talking to God about that. And with that, I prioritizing our vocations. And mm. again, things that aren't scheduled don't happen. And yeah. so scheduling dates, yes, even if it's at home, yes. one of our favorite dates is just this baked cheese in the oven and we sit at the God, table and so it's so good. good. And so mm. I think this reality of we need to carve out time for us, for our vocation, especially when our priorities start to look like they should be God, marriage, mm -hmm. kids, work, everything else. And they're often totally flipped around. And again, so we're adding in, in God, but then our marriage, like yeah. our vocation, this has to last. This is the best thing we can work on for our kids. Mm -hmm. Now, should we also add in prayer time with our kids? Yes. Mm -hmm. If that's not happening, a scripture study with them, something uh, beautiful. Again, we can link a video. Uh, but the reality of refocusing our priorities. That's what Lent is all about. Yeah. And I, I man, I, th this whole video, right, as we're, as we're talking about this, I think is really just about um, getting your priorities in order. So maybe just making a list of what are my priorities and then take a look at your life and say, is the time that I'm using reflecting the priorities that I have right now? And actually a rule of life would list God, self, spouse, kids. Yeah. And I think that that's really hard for me to hear, but the reality of like, if I am broken, mm -hmm. if I'm not stretching my body or going to the doctor, then I'm not actually able to take care of my kids. Yeah. I'm actually hurting them, the lower priorities, because I'm not getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm not. And so Again, something that you may need to add in in this season that is helpful for me to just have an extra accountability for is just working out. Yeah. Because I feel so much better when I do both mentally and physically. And so maybe that is an area that the Lord is asking you to take care of the body that he has given you that is a temple of the Holy Spirit that has been purchased with a price that mm -hmm. is not your own. Mm -hmm. And to just love him through that action. And and you're doing that so that you can serve others. Yes. So that you yes. can take care of your family, right? <laughs> yes. It <laughs> like, is not for me to spend eight hours at the gym. No. it's Because again, that's a misprioritization. Right. No, it's for you to be healthier so <laughs> yes. that we can enjoy the time that we have mm -hmm. as a family. The last thing in looking for community or prayer, we definitely recommend checking out Catholic Link has a Lenten study. It is a digital opportunity for some accountability, some fellowship, and good materials to reflect on to grow you in this season. And so if that is something that would bless you and your family, we highly recommend checking that yeah, out. Yeah, we'll leave a link in the description. Check out catholiclink.org and, um, and that opportunity. We are praying for you guys this Lent. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you got value out of this, please share it with a friend. And also leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you guys. It can be really difficult to just talk to a camera and pray that you're making a difference in someone's life. So if that person is you, please let us know. And if you have a new idea, oh, yeah. please share yeah. your new or love, different we'd idea. We'd love to hear what you guys are doing yes. for Lent. Um, so again, just thank you so much. We're praying for you guys until next time. God bless.